everyone, thanks for joining me today. In today's video, we are going to make an easy market bag. The things you'll need for this video are a 41 peg loom, your loom tool, a darning needle, your yarn, and a pair of sharp scissors. The kind of yarn I used for this is sugar and cream, and it is 100% cotton. Now I also used only one of the little skeins and I actually show a picture of it once the video starts of what it looked like but this is what it looks like now because I used most of it. So you can get an idea. It's actually sold in your local craft store for like $1.99. It's really, really reasonably, reasonably priced. And um, I had this yarn on hand because we are not allowed to leave our house or go shopping because of what's happening with the coronavirus. So this is a great way to use the stash that you have maybe laying around. And you don't have to use 100% cotton, but um, it's just what I chose to use. And I think it's that's durable material for an actual market bag which is what i'm going to use it for to take it to farmers markets fill it with fruit with this bag i actually filled it with five apples because because right now i only have apples so um i put five apples and it 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 does stretch so um once you once you have it together, you know, it, it looks smaller than what it's actually going to be because when it when it, it fills up, it's going to stretch. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions, please comment in the box below. And if you like this video, it would really, really, really make me happy if you gave it a thumbs up and maybe shared it with someone else that you might think would like it too. I would really appreciate that. So let's get started. So in this project, we're going to start with the strap. So from the anchor peg, you're going to need four stitch markers, whatever you use for stitch markers, and then count from the anchor peg over eight pegs. So from my anchor peg, I count over eight pegs. And then I'm going to count eight more pegs and then put my second stitch marker on there. So in this video, we're using sugar and cream, 100% cotton yarn. It was actually $1.99 and I have it on hand and I'm using it because of the circumstances with the coronavirus and not being able to leave the house. So um, it is a number four and like I said, it's 100% cotton and I thought it would be great to use for this little market bag. So I'm also using a 41 peg loom. So see up right here is the anchor peg. So we're just going to count over eight pegs and then we're going to place a stitch marker on the eighth peg and then we're going to count over another eight pegs and put a stitch marker there. So again, we're going to start on one side and we're making our purse strap. So we're going to do this on one side using eight pegs. So we're going to go ahead and make a slip knot. And then we're going to place that slip knot on our first peg. So wrap that around your finger and then pull it through. And then you're going to make a loop. Let's do that again. We're going to take the yarn, wrap it around our two fingers, take the string and pull it through to make a loop and go ahead and attach it to that first peg with the stitch marker on it. And now we're going to do an e-wrap and we're going to e-wrap on each one of the pegs. 
So you just make tiny little E's on each one of the pegs. Now we're gonna go the other way. So we're not going to make an E wrap on this peg. We're going to just wrap around this peg and behind the next peg, take it around, take it around the next one and go back the same way as you came, just making little E's. And like I said, you're gonna wrap behind that first one. Now we're going to take the bottom stitch over the top. So take the bottom stitch and place it over the top. And we'll do this on each one of the pegs. And go ahead and push it down just a little. You may want need to tighten that first stitch too. That's all right. It's normal for that first stitch there where your slip knot is to be a little loose. Just take it by the end and tighten it a little so it doesn't fall off of the peg. So now we're going to go the other way back. So we're going to do the purl stitch, but we're actually going to skip the first peg. So we're gonna start with the peg two and we're gonna do the purl stitch. So doing the purl stitch is taking that working yarn, placing it underneath the stitch on the peg, and then taking the stitch on the peg, pulling that working yarn up through that stitch, making a little loop. Now we're going to take that off of the peg and we're going to up put the loop back on to the peg and you'll need to tighten it with the working yarn so again place that working yarn underneath the stitch on the peg and pull up gently to make a loop take it off the peg and place that loop onto the peg back onto the peg so we're going to do this with with each one of the pegs, working our way back down to the stitch marker. Keep going and I will show you what to do next. On the last stitch, this will be the only time when we do a purl stitch. After this, the last stitch is going to be a U-wrap knit stitch. So now we're going to come back. We're going to skip that first peg and do an E-wrap back to the other stitch marker. So basically the pattern is going to be knit, purl, knit, purl. So now we're knitting off. Now we're going to do a row of the purl stitch. So for each one of the pegs, we're just going to do a purl stitch all the way down, except for the last stitch, we're going to do a U-wrap knit stitch. So you're gonna go until you get here, and then this, this one's going to be a U-wrap knit stitch for every row of the strap. So remember that. Okay, so I've made some headway here, and this is how your strap should be looking. Doing one row of knit and one row of purl, and I'm just going to show you again now that I've got a long strap. I'm doing a row here of the E-wrap stitch. And then I'm going to do a row of purl after I'm done here. So I'm going to knit these stitches off.
Okay, so now we're doing the purl stitch. So I'm going to show you again. You'll go until you get to that last stitch and then you'll do a U-wrap knit stitch. Okay, so for our last row of the strap, I'm going to end with an E-wrap. So that's very important to remember. You'll want to end with an E-wrap for that last row. Okay, so we're going to take the other end of our strap and we're going to hook the ends onto the peg in between where we put our stitch markers. So on the other side of the peg or of the loom, you should have eight pegs marked off and you're going to put the ends over the pegs. So on each one, you're just going to fit the end onto the peg. Just like that. Okay, so I have my stitch markers attached and now I'm going to take the working yarn and I'm going to do the figure eight stitch. This now is my starting peg on number eight on the right side. So I'm just gonna start doing the figure eight stitch and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, if you've never done the figure eight stitch, you wanna take that yarn, wrap it around making an eight and then you're going to take the bottom over the top, just like you would to stitch over. So again, we're gonna take where that working yarn is, skip the peg behind it, wrap it around and bring it back, and then we're going to knit over. So keep doing this. Again, as you can see, I'm skipping that peg. I'm working from the right, like when where the anchor peg is, I'm going to the right and working my way around. I usually always start at the right, on the right side. So if you can see that eight, And just continue doing this. If you have questions on how to do the figure eight stitch, I will link a video above and in the description box below. So I am just going to continue to do this. And this is how I'm also casting on to my loom on the empty pegs. I'm just gonna do the figure eight stitch the entire way around. So you can just follow, you can pause it if you need to, you can fast forward if you think that you have it down, whatever you need to do, feel free to do that. Okay, so now I have gone around. I'm going around the entire loom. I just want to show you again some of the steps that I'm doing. So 
So on the pegs that have the two stitches, we're just going to take the bottom two and put it over the top. So whatever's there, we're just going to take, see the two sets, you're going to take that and place it over the top. And this is how we are casting on for our bag. And it's totally normal. You're to take both of these over the top. So there should be two sets and you just take them and slip them over the top. So again, we're just going to continue casting on doing our figure eight stitch. I just wanted to show you what it looked like once you got to the other side by the strap. So you wouldn't worry about having those two on the bottom. And just to let you know it's okay, go ahead and cast on just like such and take the bottom two over the top. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to help you. Now once we make it around to the start, we're just going to have the normal figure eight stitch. So the entire pattern after this is going to be just the normal figure eight stitch. So keep on going until you get to the stitch that we started on and then you will be fully casted on. Continue the stitch pattern the entire way around and you will have a stitch on each one of the pegs and then we're going to continue doing the figure eight stitch for the entire length of the project until you get to the desired length of your market bag. So just keep going, making that figure eight stitch. So here we are at peg one, where our loom marker is. This is how it's looking. I'm really excited about the way this is looking. And the neat part is, for this yarn, I only paid $1.99. And it looks like I'm gonna have enough yarn for the entire bag. Now, keep in mind, you may want a bigger bag than mine, but I'm kind of anxious to get this project done. And because we aren't allowed to leave the house and get yarn, the, the yarn store is not even open. So um, I'm pretty happy that this is gonna be sufficient. You could probably use this also as like a beach bag if you wanted to, but um, I specifically am going to be taking this to like farmers markets if we ever, you know, get back to normal. And um, so I'm really excited and I did do a test. I don't have much fruit here, but I have about six apples and it did hold my six apples when I was done. So, um, I'm really excited and I really hope that you like this project too. So we are done 
and now we are going to cast off so let's just take our, our last stitch here and uh, we're going to do our last figure eight now we are on peg one where our stitch marker is so we're going to take that working yarn and we're going to wrap it around the loom like one and a half times because we need enough yarn to be able to tie it or pull it and I'll show you what I mean so let's wrap it around okay let's give our yarn a little cut here and I'll show you the next step so get your tool out and we're gonna start at peg one and take that tail and put it below the stitch on the peg and pull it all the way out and we're gonna do this for each one of the pegs so again put it below the stitch and pull it all the way out go all the way around the loom until you get back to peg one but remember you already did peg one so once you're at the peg before peg one you are good so continue doing this the whole way around the loom So once you do this, you're going to take the stitch off of each one of these pegs, and then you're going to pull on the tail. So once you work your way around the loom back to peg one, you're going to remove each one of these stitches off of the peg. And this is the process of actually removing the bag off of the loom so like I said after you do what we're doing here you're just gonna take that loom tool and take each one of these stitches off of the loom okay so I've removed the bag off of the loom and now I threaded my darning needle and I'm just going to take that tail and sew in a circle to make that hole tight. So once I removed it off of the loom, I pulled on the tail. And that's what closes the hole. And now I am sewing up the middle. And that is going to make it tight. Then I'm going to knot it off. And then I am going to thread my darning needle again so around and just give it a cut to make sure make sure it's nice and tight and then just give it a cut now I'm going to reach through because I actually turned my bag inside out but it doesn't really matter with this project if you do or not because it's pretty forgiving in the way that it looks and that is going to do it the bag is done there's one more part up in the strap that needs sewed in but other than that this is it Here's the tail up here. So what you would want to do with that is just again thread your darning needle and you just want to like go back and forth, just hide it. And again, it's not no one's really going to see it anyway. This is a really forgiving project. So just go through a couple times. It's already knotted and then just give that a cut. And that's gonna do it. I hope you've enjoyed this project. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I thank you for watching. I hope everyone is healthy and safe and I will see you at the next video.